Welcome to the Center for Relativistic Laser Science. So my name is Chang Inam. I'm the director of Corelis. It is my pleasure to welcome you and show you around the Corelis Petawatt Laser Facility. We are conducting research on relativistic laser matter interactions using multi petawatt laser. First, you will see how a petawatt laser experiment is performed in the control room. Then, you are guided to the petawatt laser room and the experimental areas, including at the second science lab. Here, Dr. Kalin Hujibota will explain how we carry out an experiment in the control room. The Corel's researchers are conducting experiments in this control room. Today, we are performing a nonlinear Compton scattering experiment in which a high energy multi GeV electron beam, accelerated by a petawatt laser, is collided with an ultra intense laser pulse. The whole laser system and the experimental devices are remotely controlled from this control room. After each laser shot, all the information, such as laser parameters, the electron beam spectrum and electron beam energy, uh, or other gamma ray data, are collected. All the experimental devices are synchronized and controlled precisely. Now, the countdown for the next laser shot will begin. Hello, my name is Hwang Hun Lee, working at laser team of Corels. You are in the 4 petat laser room with the ultra-intense and ultra-fast laser facilities located. From now, I'll introduce our 4 petat laser system. The petal laser beam is produced through multiple steps. Firstly, an ultra-short, high-contrast seed pulse is generated from the cross-polarized wave combined front end. Then, the ultra-short laser pulse is stretched for short pulse amplification. After that, it is amplified in the optical parametric chart first amplification preamplifier. In this way, we can suppress the formation of a pre pulse and maintain an excellent temporal contrast. At this moment, the temperature inside the razor and the timing jitter of the trigger are precisely controlled to stabilize the laser beam. In the next amplification stage, the pulse energy of 100 terawatt is achieved through two power amplification stages. After passing through large size booster amplification stages, the laser power finally reaches 4 petawatts. Since the laser power is extremely high, we have to increase the beam size using a beam expander after the amplification. At this time, the wavefront error of the laser beam is corrected using a wavefront sensor and the deformable mirror. After the amplification achieved using the long laser pulses, the pulse duration is compressed down to 17 frames per second using a large-scale grating compressor, which is the last step of the chart pulse amplification. Finally, the laser beam is ready for an experiment.
Hello, my name is Kalin Johan Horsbota and I am a research fellow in the Low Density Laser Plasma Group. Now you will see the target chambers and how our petawatt laser system is used for experiments. An extremely intense laser field is obtained by tightly focusing the ultra-short laser beam, which is optimized using the secondary adaptive optic system. The laser beam can be arranged in many different ways depending on the desired experiment. In the electron acceleration chamber, a high-quality multi-GV electron beam can be accelerated. The electron beam can then be used in a nonlinear compton scattering experiment in which it collides with another intense laser beam. There are numerous devices used for the detection of secondary radiation and particles generated during laser matter interactions. In some experiments, such as ion acceleration and relativistic high harmonic generation, a laser pulse should be absolutely clean without having prepulses. In order to obtain such a high contrast laser pulse, we use double plasma mirrors. A high-energy ion beam can be generated by focusing the high-conscious laser pulse in this proton acceleration chamber. In this large rectangular chamber, a relativistic high harmonic generation experiment is performed. The 150 terawatt beam line is split among several experimental research groups. The system is especially useful for testing various targets and devices. The Corels facility also has a 150 terawatt laser system. The 150 terawatt laser is highly useful for preliminary experiments that can be performed before the petawatt laser experiments. The high energy density group also uses the 150 terawatt laser for their research. Hello, this is Gyeongtaek Kim. I'm an Associate Director of Corels. I'm leading Atosecond Science Group. Let me introduce Atosecond Science Lab. The Atosecond Science Group uses 1 kHz 10 mJ CP stabilized titanium sapphire laser for the experiment. The laser beam is compressed using a stretched holocaust fiber down to 4 to 5 m per second. The amplitude and phase of the ultra-short laser pulse are completely characterized using a homemade pulse characterization technique called tip-tone. Strong field experiments such as high harmonic generation and prostrated tunneling ionizations are performed using these high harmonic beam lines. Recently, the Atosecond Science Group developed a liquid target that can be used for relativistic high harmonic generation experiment.
The ultra-fast electron dynamics in nanostructures can be studied using this photoemission electron microscope. The photoemission electron microscope has a spatial resolution of 40 nanometer. The experimental results are actively discussed with the theory group to analyze the data and also to make a plan for the future experiment. We are back to the control room. I hope you enjoyed the lab tour. Though the tour was a brief virtual tour, it showed our petard laser and the experimental areas. Our research on strong field physics with the multi petard laser is a long journey. We will continue to investigate challenging physical problems in relativistic laser matter interactions, strong field quantum electrodynamics, and laboratory astrophysics. I sincerely wish you would come to Corel's to have a chance to visit our facility in the near future. Thank you very much.